Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Looking forward to this. I've been working on this for a couple of weeks. I've wanted to do something for Fire Safety Week. Um, for those who don't know me, hello. My name is Charles McNamara. I am the Director of Operations at Guardian Group Services. Um, also, don't know if he's gonna join, but the owner, Bruce Weiss, may pop in. Um, we have some fun stuff today. We're gonna talk a lot about Fire Safety Week, which is this week. A lot of people don't know that it's Fire Safety Week. Uh, our company, Guardian Group Services, we do a lot of training. We do security training, fire safety training, OSHA training, CPR, AED, first aid, the F80, the FLSD, and all of those bingo letters for the certificates of fitness, which we will get into today. The topic, obviously, Fire Safety Week. Um, how did it get started? What is it all about? So I just want to thank you all for tuning in live. If you have questions, feel free, put them in the comments. So Fire Safety Week, um, really, really important. I'm going to talk about, you know, how and when and why. So the great Chicago fire kind of kicked this things off. We needed, um, fire safety, obviously to be discussed. Big, big fire, 1871, the great Chicago fire. I'm not here to give you um, a lesson. You can kind of look up that on your own, but probably one of the biggest fires, estimated 300 fatalities, um, over 2,000 acres burned, over um, 17,000 buildings destroyed. Um, so very, very serious stuff. Fires can spread very, very quickly. Um, so in today's episode, we're gonna talk about fire safety in the home, at work, to and from, we're gonna cover it all. I always like to kick things off with a funny joke. So why did the scarecrow become a firefighter? Anybody know why did the scarecrow become a firefighter? <sighs> because he was outstanding in his field. But I'm pumped. And that's why folks, I am not a comedian. Uh, but we are gonna have fun today. We're gonna do a giveaway. We'll talk a little bit about this as well. A lucky winner, lucky winner can win one F80 class and one lucky winner will win the F89. Um, comment in the comments which class you want to win and why. We'll talk a little bit about that, but that's how you get entered into this giveaway. Uh, we want to give back to our students and our viewers. One person's going to win the F80, one's going to win the F89. Smoke alarms, we'll start off today with smoke alarms. Everybody has them, should have them. Hope you didn't take them out because you're a bad cook and you just said, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Uh, but very important, at home, you gotta have a working smoke alarm and you should test them every six months. All right, you should be doing this every six months. You can kind of use this time, especially in October, it's a good, time to have a conversation um, with your family, with your loved ones, significant other also. Um, in commercial buildings, they need to be tested. We'll talk a little bit about that as well, but there has to be someone with a specific license because they're tied into a command station. But very easy to check. Make sure you have a working smoke alarm. They save lives. They save lives. Um, another important topic to discuss, and this is going to be unique to where you live. Um, could be in a one family home, two family home, small little studio apartment, um, could be at work. You got to know at least two ways to get out of Dodge. If there's an emergency, right? Um, practice them and practice them at different times, right? Speak to your family members. You know, how are we going to get out if we wake up in um the middle of the night because that's when most fires occur or you know how are we going to get out if it's 9 30 in the morning right um also at work look for your fire exits make sure nothing is blocking them very important right know your routes know your routes 
know how to get out of where you live. Now you hear this a lot as a kid, and you sometimes never hear it again. I was amazed. I, I taught a training class um, in my background, and I've been in fire safety for almost two decades now. I'm also a trainer, and, and I go out and I do drills, and, and I do um, a whole bunch of different fire safety classes. Some people tell me they have never heard of stop, drop, and roll. Pretty crazy. Uh, let me know in the comments if you ever heard this stop, drop, and roll. I'm um, curious to know. A lot of people said that they didn't hear of it. I had this drilled into me as a kid at school, um, right? If you catch fire, pretty simple. Stop. Don't run around. Stop. Get down to the ground and roll over, right? The fire triangle needs fuel, oxygen, and heat. Take away one of those, you put out the fire. Um, but you might be dealing with someone with someone who maybe physically can't get down to the ground. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Another very important thing at home, at work, gotta have them, gotta know where they are. And you have to make sure you know how to use them. Portable fire extinguishers. We'll talk about the PASS system, right? Everybody probably knows PASS. Pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Pull the pin. Aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the lever, sweep from left to right. Know where they are, make sure they are in good working condition. And as always, if there's a fire, make sure that you call 911, get the fire department there as quickly as possible. Know the different classes of fire, class A, B, C, D, and K. Fire safety for children. Now, there is a great place you can go to get information for fire safety um, for children. Go to your local firehouse. Stop in, say hello, introduce yourself. Kids always get a kick out of it. But you got to teach kids, right? And, and they learn differently. They learn through games. They learn through books. They learn through visuals, the, the, um, the videos, right? Discussions. Keep them engaged. They're smarter than you think. They know a lot. So keep those children engaged, right? There's posters, there's things that you can get to um, help supplement your training, but keep them engaged. Keep them part of that discussion. Next one we're gonna talk about is fire safety in public places. Sometimes we don't even think about this, right? We think about our home, that's about it. We don't think about, you know, when we go on vacation somewhere, maybe to a hotel somewhere brand new we've never been before. Um, we as adults might be going to um, schools for ourselves or to our children's schools. We might be going to places of worship or just public buildings in our day-to-day -day lives. You know, we visit so many different places, gotta know fire safety, how to get in, how to get out, how to get around, very, very important, right? So if uh, you're in a building, and there's a fire, you got smoke, you got flames. Do not use the elevator. Do not use the stairs, okay? And most importantly, leave the building before posting on social media, okay? Get out of there, get out of the zone, make sure you're safe first. And then you can tweet about it and post about it later, okay? Promise we want you to get out there safely and quickly. Something that you should also consider, fire safety for seniors, people who might have some disabilities or maybe um, English is not their first language, right? We've got to look out for those folks as well. So when you have those conversations, right, you should do it every six months. Keep it fresh in the springtime, keep it fresh in the fall, weather changes. So that's something to consider as well, but address those unique fire safety needs for people that have um, mobility challenges getting around or cognitive issues, right? Um, the goal is to keep people safe, get them out as quickly as possible, but safely as possible as well. Um, you know, so a great resource, um, FEMA and the U.S. Fire Administration. Think about your needs specifically, right? If you've got glasses, hearing aids, canes, wheelchairs right whatever you have close to your bed 
Um, you know, if there's an emergency and you got to get out of there, you want to be able to grab things quickly and then be able to get out of there. So the U.S. Fire um, Association is a couple of links I'm going to put in the description of this video. Very helpful. And they're free. I'm from Brooklyn. If it's free, it's from me. Um, right. Just general fire safety. Some some basic things to know about fire safety. You got to have the tools um, for you. Those are just kind of some basic things to consider. Um, you know, I like to talk a little bit about the training that we do at Guardian Group Services. And this kind of gets a little more specific um, to the FDNY. So once again, if you are interested in entering into that giveaway, Guardian Group Services is going to give away one F80 class for one lucky viewer. And we are also going to give away one F89 class for one lucky viewer. All you have to do is type in the comments which class you want to win and why winners will be selected at the end of the month randomly. Now let's get into some fun stuff. Uh, my favorite stuff. I like talking about the fire department stuff. As I was preparing for this, you know, I kind of looked at my resume. Uh, you know, I've been in this field for about 20 years now, two decades. And, you know, I have a binder full of certificates and different licenses. And with the fire department, I have 16 different FDNY certificates of fitness. A C of F looks like this. This is just a sample. Um, you know, if you're working in New York City in the five boroughs, there are literally a hundred different certificates of fitness a person can have for different types of work, for impairments, for shelters, for high-rise buildings, for um, torch work, for construction sites. So we'll break down some of those. The common codes, the local laws, important things to know. I know my fire safety directors, they know this right away. Local law 5, local law 16, 26, 41, 88 code, right? I know my fire safety directors are typing right now. Ooh, ooh, I know that, I know that. Local Law 5, you know, creates that position of the FSD, which is now known as the FLSD. An individual um, has to do a lot. They've got to do 31 hours of training. They've got to do a computer-based test. they got a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But in regard to those fire guard licenses, F01 is for impairments. So if you have an impairment, that basically means, you know, you have something impaired with your sprinkler, your standpipe, or your fire alarm system. So it's supposed to be maintained in good working order at all times. And if it's not, you have an impairment. And you have to have someone on site with the F01. The F02 is specific to shelters. F03 and F04 for places of public assembly. All right, so there's literally a hundred of them if you go to the fire department's website, but those are the most common. They're good licenses to have. If you're looking to make a career in this industry. So when I talk about, um, I don't want to say it's in tiered levels because they're all different, but bronze, silver, and gold, right? If you're going to work with the fire alarm systems, you can kind of think of this one as the beginner phase, the S95 is specific to panels that do not have or require two-way communication. So someone's just gonna like monitor this panel. The next one that we talk about is kind of the next level up, a little more responsibility for shelters. They have to have an individual who has what is called the F80 certificate of fitness so it's a one day class it's about eight hours long with an exam at the end and then once a person completes that the next step they have to go to the fire department and take the computer-based test very detailed stuff and then as i just started to talk about this earlier um you can kind of think of this as a gold standard um because this is required in a lot of buildings where there are more than a hundred or more people above or below ground level or a total of 500 people in the entire building and that person folks is called the flsd the flsd 
Fire and Life Safety Director, has what is called an F-89. I know it's like alphabet soup, we're playing bingo today. I should have put a bingo card up and then we can play bingo while we talk fire safety, but very important stuff. And you know, I wanted to share some helpful resources for you, your friends, your family, your coworkers, your supervisors, your staff, because I feel it's important to share resources, right? How do we keep people safe? If you are in this industry, in fire safety, it's all about protection, protection of life, you are protecting people and you know one of the best resources i could recommend is this right here the fdny fire and life safety director association it's a great organization they have meetings monthly at different locations throughout the city and they discuss many different topics of fire and non-fire emergencies. Just to kind of review, right? If you're looking to get into fire safety, you should definitely look into getting your S95 or your F80 or your F89, right? It's a great way to kind of work on building blocks, also make some more money in this industry. There's nothing wrong with that and really becoming a fire safety professional. Let me know your thoughts, which one you would like to get. Also, Guardian Group Services has some amazing apps that you can download on the Google Play and Apple stores. You just search Guardian Group Services. There's several that you can download. Another great resource uh, that folks look into and become part of is the NFPA, National Fire Prevention Agency, nfpa.org, is a great, great resource. You should definitely look into that. And once again, folks, right, for that giveaway that we're going to do, type down in the comments which one you would be interested in taking. Uh, we will select someone at random on Halloween, right? Trick or treat. Someone's going to get a, a, a very nice class. And that's our talk today for fire safety. I hope this information was helpful for you. We hope that you find value in it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the cool stuff. Got a couple of people in the chat. I wanted to say a quick shout out, Jonathan. We love Jonathan and the Fortune Society. Hello, good morning. Um, wow, got so many people. I gotta scroll like all the way back. Um, hello and good morning. Hello and good morning, Angelique. Hope you are doing well. Um, Damien, good good point. I heard of it. We used to do it in elementary school, talking about stop, drop, and roll. Um, Rob Stevens is saying he wants to win the F80. Your name's going in the hat, my friend. Good fire safety professional there as well. Um, Madman, Michael Mann, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, folks, it's been a pleasure. I hope you found this information uh, useful in your process of becoming a fire safety professional. And don't forget, like, share, subscribe, do all the cool stuff that these kids are doing today. Um, we look forward to the giveaway. We're going to have two lucky winners on Halloween. Stay safe, stop, drop, and roll. And that's our chat for Fire Safety Week.